I'm always happy to be here with Eric Klein because I learn a lot from whatever he shares, whether it's about spirituality or about business. And so today I have the privilege of interviewing him about his business progress over the past, you know, we could say six to 12 months, let's say, uh, Eric, whatever time frame you want to use mm -hmm. is fine. Um, Eric, I'm so grateful that Eric is one of the helpers in my ABC Master Heart uh, client group. And uh, yeah, so we'll just go from here. Eric's going to be sharing insights. I think that um, many of you here and myself will benefit from. So Eric, thank you for doing this. And uh, I would love for you to introduce yourself first to the audience. Okay. Uh, I'm Eric Klein from Wisdom Heart. And Wisdom Heart is a spiritual school, let's call it. We teach Kriya Yoga which is an ancient 3,000-year-old lineage, but very updated in the way that we do it, focusing on cultivating deep meditative communion, taking the radiance into your body-mind for healing of trauma and karma, and then embodying your purpose in the world. So those are the three disciplines that we focus on. Love that. And that's uh, part of the work we've done together, I guess, over the yes. past year or so is, the, is your framework. Yeah. And, um, but I, I, I want you to share anything that's particularly alive for you right now in your yeah. business development, in your understanding of how to, you know, kind of facilitate your community, um, the growth of it, the, the legacy of it, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. Well, the framework is a big piece. And I think, um, in my helper role in, in, in the, uh, in your community, you know, several people that I've been interacting with who are working on their framework, and it's caused me to reflect back on my own journey, which I, where I feel right now I've landed on a kind of simplicity that um, there was a, I think it was Oliver Wendell Holmes. Yes. He said, I wouldn't give a fig for the simplicity before complexity, but I would give my life for the simplicity that comes after complexity. And so you know, there's a simplicity. When we first start into a discipline or a practice or, you know, an area of interest, sometimes we think we have it. And in, in the simple way we do, but then the journey of discovering all the nuances and the details and the permutations and the issues, we get can get like bound up in the complexity. And I would, you know, as a double Virgo, I probably spent too many decades in that little uh, hamster wheel. And... Now, on the other side of that, I appreciate actually all of the discoveries of the complexity because I can now see there's depth to the simplicity. I have all of that available so that the simple outline of three disciplines really is a um it's a it's it's a way of containing. It's like a way of embracing lots of complexity that can yeah. be available to the students then because it, they'll be at different stages of their own development. And, and they're still working on those three disciplines. We're all working on those three spiritually, communing yes. with the divine, receiving the grace, expressing it. It's uh, it's very mm. simple, but there's a lot that we get in, yes. we get in our own way in all those dimensions. So I, but the quick, quick piece is it's such a, it's such a relief to land on the simplicity and to know that it's holding all of that depth and complexity. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. That's what I right on appreciate. Yeah. And I and I hope that I don't even know if I hope that others don't have to spend decades doing it. It's all good work, you know. All those iterations are all good work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, like you said, before you expanded upon all this knowledge, the the three wouldn't have had as much meaning or power. Um, and now that you've done all this work and of well creating the courses and the content mm -hmm. and uh, the, the 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 teachings, basically, these three are a beautiful summary and way to hold on uh, to, to the way doors into this, you know, into this. Yeah, that's really. Yeah. Um, another thing that uh, I, maybe you could speak to um, is just your content creation journey over the past however long you want to say it, but because um, you've, you've done, you've done, well, I mean, you've actually even tracked the data for your social yeah. media over the past couple of years. Yes. Right. 
yes. and which is wonderful because you get to see what's working well and you could take yes. that into stage two yes. and um so tell so tell us about that like okay f- first of all i think um has it has it ever been a struggle um to create content and if not uh you know why do you think it hasn't been a struggle for you okay The main struggle for me in the beginning was the technical part, honestly. Like mm. I and I that's still I don't have patience around the technical side of things. So that is a struggle to cultivate patience. Okay, on that side of it. The um a bit of perfectionism in the beginning, wanting to retake things where you take things. But uh I think from doing public seminars for many, many, many years, I realized. And I applied it to the social media space, which was that I'm not qualified to tell if it's going well. It's them. It's like, I, you know, I can notice this is not my best speech, but people are enjoying it. I'll take it. You know, it's like their response is more important than my own assessment. Okay. And, you know, it's obvious in the room. I can think that I didn't do it. The timing was off, but they're laughing. It must have been funny then, you know, I'll just move on. And so that's a piece of what may, has made it enjoyable for me, which is um, since I'm talking to a camera, part of my practice is I want to entertain myself. Like I want to have fun. I wanted to, I want to have learnings and insights and just, I want to amuse myself in a certain way. So I, I do keep that is as one of my core intentions. I want to deeply touch people and I'm one of the people I want it to touch me as I'm doing it. Right. That's, that's, what's made it fun. That's and one of the things I've learned from you and is, and I hope you take, it's like, you can say the same thing a million times. It doesn't matter. Okay. So, because one, not everyone's listening to all of those versions of it. Two, they'll hear it in their own way. And three, there's subtle differences at moments in time that you emphasize and whatnot. So repeating, and I think actually that's a, I think that's a feature of good teaching, like having three disciplines, having a repetitive message over and over and over coming back to the core message is actually inspiring for other, for people, for the audience. Like it's inspiring for me to hear you iterate on the idea of your own growth as being a core principle of content creation. I don't tire of hearing that. And, you know, I've probably heard it, I don't know, 300 times. It's always good to hear. And so for me to say as a creator, I can, I actually need to repeat things. It's a good, it's actually service, not just to my own learning, but service to people to repeat the same thing over and over again. Oh my God. Thank you for saying that, that I heard, I've heard it now uh, a new time, you know, like a, it's, it's, it's new what you, what you said, of course, I've heard before, but I'm hearing it anew. And I think it's, uh, you know, because I'm thinking about the, the various videos I listen to or watch or mm-hmm. even the articles I read. And, and this is not just in the spiritual space, spiritual, spiritual stuff. We can. It's easier to understand why we need to repeat, because sure. timeless wisdom is still not embodied as fully as we would like it to. So we're yeah. we'd love to, and, and or like motivational things or like inspirational. We understand, but even it's strange. Even technical things. I find myself reading an article about about some kind of technical, like for example, learning how to do some AI thing, and I'm like, and it's actually calming for me mm. to read again what I know, I'm like, oh, yes, that's yeah. right. That's right. I'm glad, I'm glad to see that again. And that kind of confirms for me, right? That, okay, I'm on the right track. And of course, the article usually has some other nuance or some other thing that I didn't know about. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. It ties in to the foundations. Right. And it's like, I want to be calmed again, <laughs> to be reassured again, that the foundation is still You're on the path. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, especially when in regards to personal growth, spiritual development, um, relationships, healing, um, the kinds of stuff that a lot of us here watching this or listening to this yeah. work with. So that's really, and I, I love what you said just now about 
how like you're amusing yourself in your content. I'm like, that's so true. Like when I, like I have to be enjoying the process and like when it comes to video, I mean, whether it's video or writing, I think it's the same thing. Like to see what comes out, it's like, oh, oh yeah, I know. <laughs> that makes sense. It's like, yeah. oh, I didn't think of it that way. I didn't until I saw myself typing it or until I saw myself saying it. It's really true. And it's, you know, that, wow, that's brilliant. And it's not personal. It's just like, it's, it's enjoying the, it's enjoying the flow of the wisdom or it's enjoying the flow of the transmission that's coming, you know, from wherever it's coming from and anyone's model of the world. It's so beautiful to be participating in that. And, and that comes across, I think, to people when they're watching your own, uh, the way it's lighting you up is going to be transmitting an energy and a quality of, of joyfulness that, you know, is, is, is probably a high percentage of why people are attracted. It's not the content, but it's yeah. the uh, embodiment of that. That's joyful. really, really good. I like that the way. I, okay. So uh, I have another question for you and then, oh my gosh, the time is already uh, passing so quickly, but have you, when, when you see an idea that you had taken a note of like, Oh, I'll make a video about this or I'll write about this. And do you ever feel like, Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't have juice for you anymore. Um, like, oh, oh it doesn't, it's not alive for you. Mm. What's that? You're saying finding an, like making a journal note about something and then looking at it later? Looking at it later and say, oh, I don't feel like making, writing about it or, or, or speaking about it. And then you're, you need to draw a blank about what you want to say, or you, oh. you run out of ideas. Do you ever experience that? Either, t you know, like, oh, it's not interesting. In other words, somehow losing motivation based on your existing notes. Oh, Okay. Sometimes I look at my, I do write things down a lot in my, like I have these journals that I would do. Yes. And I don't always remember what I was so interested in, but I guess that's slightly different. I don't even know what I was talking about. Right. I don't yeah. feel yeah. like yeah. there's no lack. If you, I guess if I think about students basically and their questions or just their life, sometimes just people I know who, you know, are either in the community or beyond the community, just who are every human is struggling with something and if it, if it if i notice if i notice it it means it's part of my reflection practice it's it's i because I, I don't notice everything so if i notice that you know like these neighbors down the street are having to move not like you but apparently from from lack of choice their kids are moving them so they're struggling with making a change that they didn't they it seems like they didn't choose so that's something that's there's a universal problem there that could apply to many people. That's how I get inspired. I like to think, what's the universal here? And then, oh, the doorway in, you know, their story is they're moving. But you know what? Maybe you're fired from your job. Maybe someone left you in a relationship. Those are all changes that you apparently didn't choose. How can you adapt to them creatively? That's an example. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, it's relevant. Uh, it's real. Um, yeah. It actually is affecting a, a human being and you're empathizing with that when the empathy is what creates the energy, right? Yes. Like of, of yes. the yes. aliveness. The empathy the creates the energy and the empathy is, uh, and part of the practice for me at least is to discover that I have that, that same issue in my psyche you know, I'm not like, oh, I know, dear, I can fix that for you with my teachings. It's like, oh, wow, you brought up something that's alive for both of us. And mm -hmm. I'm going to explore it. And that's what capes for me. That's what makes it so energizing, actually, because I yeah. it's 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 my own. It's continuing to deepen my own awakening through. Yes. Through the gifts that others are giving me by saying, what about this? You know. What about now, given that you teach this you know, multi-thousand year lineage. Yeah. And you have studied this stuff for years, decades. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you, I guess maybe you've answered the question, but the question is how do you keep it fresh? It's Every always, time, like, yeah. like for example, this this three-part framework. Yeah. You obviously probably reteach it at least once a year or whatnot. Yeah. How do you return to the framework and bring aliveness to it? Mm-hmm. How do I do it? I think the way I do it is, um, first of all, I know that I have a, I know that I have a, a library of sort of <laughs> preloaded 
wraps that I could do. You know, I sure I have all those available. I can push those buttons anytime. So I don't have to worry if there's anything to say. I know that I have that background. And anyone who's developed enough mastery to choose to be in a business sharing it, you have enough background. So that is all there. So not to worry. And then the second, then I just go into a place of of like, it's kind of like beginner's mind. I'm like, I don't know what's actually, I know what, I know what the preloaded stream is, but I don't know what's going to surprise me in the conversation. Like this conversation, I, this is a good example. I could go into some talk about learning stages of development, but those are all preloaded. I didn't know what we were going to talk about. And I want to learn about it. I want to discover it in the moment. So same with the three practices. I want to discover it in the moment. Yeah. It's That's happening. Really, all, yeah. yeah. The images come. And then I don't. I just trust. I don't even know where an image is going. It's a trusting to follow it because I want to learn where it's going. Yes. Yeah, that's really good. And and also trusting that th whatever does occur is useful to the yes. student, to the audience member. Like yeah. that is the trust we're I think that, that's a lot of, that's a lot of what people doubt. It's like, oh, I have to prepare more. I have to I can't just show up and allow what emerges right. to emerge. Well, George, when I was a consultant, I would I on the drives to the clients from the airport or wherever, I would put in tapes of like teachers and and I'd be like, I, I need to listen to this before I get there. So I know these things. I was like, but then when you arrive, it's not, you can't, it's not that, you know, it's, it's whatever's there. And, and then what needs to come forward comes forward. Because if you, in fact, if you were regurgitating what you heard on the drive, yeah. Or what we prepared in our notes, we have to like make sure we stay faithful to to that piece of content. Right. It loses the life. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. So there's always a relationship, even if I, it's with the camera and you don't think there's anyone at the other end. You know, you're here to be amused. And I like I do think of somebody and I'm talking to yeah. them, you know, yeah. somebody I love and care about and who is yeah. smiling at me. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. This is very helpful, actually. Um, share with us what you what you do offer. Someone who's watching this and okay. is curious about the, the, the three-part framework you've discussed, um, what should they do now? What should they do now? Come to wisdomheart.com and you know, test, check it out. There's some free stuff, a lot of free stuff there to enjoy and see if you resonate because that's 90% of it is if there's chemistry. And then yeah. if you if you do, I'd love to meet you. We'll go yeah. further. Yeah. And do you, uh, you offer, um, just tell us about the you know, oh, okay. you know, individual we courses. Have, there's three ways that you can work with yeah. me and with Wisdom Heart. So there's mentoring. That's one-on-one -on -one work. Mm -hmm. There's uh, a membership, which is our community. And that's, then you get all the courses as they come out. And every almost every month, sometimes a course lasts three months, but you get all the courses as part of your membership and on the opportunity to be on live calls where you get coaching and interaction with me and with other like-minded seekers and such. And the third way is to take them, you know, a la carte, you know, you can order courses, so to speak, and, and, and just take them at your own pace in your own way. Yeah. Thank you. And the first thing, first step again, wisdomheart.com. Yeah. Take a look at all the free content that's there. Um, Eric has both videos as well as doodles eric you know it's one yes, of the things eric art, does is amazing music and yeah and right art music um, articles etc so go and check it out wisdomheart.com thank you so much eric for this thank you yeah, thanks for taking the time today